Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here, folks. Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming one day very soon. Folks, it is amazing to watch what we have been watching for for weeks coming to pass before our very eyes. I have stated many times why my eyes right now are glued with what's going on, what's happening in Israel. Again, Israel is God's prophetic timepiece. If you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic timeline, you watch his timepiece, which is the nation of Israel. Again, Israel is the hour hand, Jerusalem as the minute hand, the Temple Mount as the second hand. All right? We are on the verge right now of a dispensational change. All right? right now, we're in the dispensation of grace, which is the church age, but God is about to put his full attention back to the nation of Israel for Daniel's 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, we are on the verge right now. We are on the cusp of the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, all right? Because I am watching God's prophetic timeline, or his timepiece, again, which is the nation of Israel, right? This year, again, 2022, is very different than any other year, folks, and I'll tell you why. Because before Ramadan even began this year on April 1st, we saw the terrorist attacks happening in Israel and then increasing as we went further into Ramadan, which ended a couple days ago uh, on May 1st. But before Ramadan even began this year, we had the mosques inside of Israel again calling for Israel's destruction. By July 8th of this year, 2022, due to their interpretation uh, from some verses in the Quran. Now, Israel is not going to be completely destroyed by July 8th of 2022. That's a bunch of hogwash. Jesus Christ is going to reign and rule from Jerusalem during his 1,000-year millennial reign. However, the surrounding enemies that try to come against Israel to destroy Israel, they will be destroyed. That we know for sure, according to, according to the Bible. All right? But we have seen this massive uprising from the surrounding enemies of Israel um, to destroy Israel. On the very first day of Passover this year, 2022, we saw the escalation on the Temple Mount, which has continued ever since. And the world is pointing fingers at, uh, at Israel and blaming Israel uh, for the clashes and violence at the Temple Mount. On top of this, again, Israel's government is weak right now on the verge of collapsing again, heading toward possible fifth elections in just the last three years. Again, this has never happened in Israel's history before since Israel became a nation in 1948. Uh, but Israel's government is weak right now. And if you're the enemies of Israel, right, this is a perfect time for you to strike. Folks, I want you to remember again, last year, actually exactly one year ago this month, May of 2021, we saw uh, the 11-day skirmish which occurred in May of 2021 between Israel and Hamas. Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah stayed out of that fight. But the, Islamic, the leader of Islamic Jihad came out after the skirmish and said that the next battle for Jerusalem would be regional war. To refresh your memory, here we go again. After the 11-day skirmish last May of 2021, in June of 2021, this is from the Middle East Monitor. The leader of Islamic Jihad came out and said, the next Jerusalem battle will be regional war. This article went on to say, the next battle over Jerusalem will be a regional war, a senior member of the Islamic Jihad's movement political borough warned. It is enough to hear five prominent leaders in the region expressing their readiness to defend Jerusalem. He described those forces as capable of waging war and leading a regional battle for Jerusalem. Hamas has came out recently and said they are prepared for a six-month war against Israel. And make no mistake about it, again, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and the other surrounding enemies of Israel have very clearly said that the next go about, all right, they say out of the last flight, last May, again, exactly one year ago, this month is when we saw the last flare-up between Israel and Hamas. But the other enemies of Israel said, this next go around, we're all going to jump in. And then I get alerted to this today, folks. Again, one year ago this month was when we saw the last flare up. This 
month, May of 2022, we're seeing it all come together again, folks, leading to something much, 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 much bigger. This just in from the Times of Israel. Hamas warns Israel playing with fire as Temple Mount groups plan Thursday visit. It's Wednesday as I'm recording this video. Tomorrow, Thursday, uh, looks like there's big stuff coming, folks. Jewish groups vow to ascend to holy site on Israel's Independence Day. And then I get this from JNS. Hamas threatens war if Temple Mount opened to Jews on Independence Day. Hamas on Tuesday said Israel's intention to allow Jews to visit the Temple Mount on Thursday, tomorrow, Israel's Independence Day, would lead to a fresh round of fighting. Folks, what we have been talking about for weeks is happening. The battle for Jerusalem is closer than any of us think. It's all lined up. Watch for these Temple Mount clashes to begin again, possibly this Thursday, tomorrow, um, Israel's Independence Day. And don't forget the last 11-day skirmish between Israel and Hamas last May 2021 occurred shortly after clashes and violence on the Temple Mount. And here we are again, one year later exactly, and the same thing is lining up, except this time Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and the other surrounding enemies of Israel said they would join the fight. It's all lined up, folks. Again, we are on the verge right now of a dispensational change. Keep your eyes on Israel, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount in the days ahead, especially tomorrow. Again, Hamas has made very clear if Jews are allowed to go to the Temple Mount tomorrow on Israel's Independence Day, they're threatening rocket fire and they're threatening a new war to begin. And we know what they said the next war would include. Again, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, and the other surrounding enemies of Israel to join the fight. We're on the verge of a dispensational change, folks. Again, that's how I why I believe we're on the verge of the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ. I'm watching Israel. I'm watching Jerusalem. I'm watching the Temple Mount. And that's how I know we're close. And if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. And you will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back one day very soon. This current world system, this current world order, it is sinking, and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now, and that lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you can never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you can never pay on your own, Jesus paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line, you're not promised your next breath. Any of us can breathe our last breath at any moment. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you, I am imploring you right now to get saved. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now, because tomorrow 
is not promised, and Jesus is coming soon. God bless you all.